So today what I wanted to show you is our basic I.O. shield that was created specifically as an add-on board for our chip kit product line. So let's take a look at the chip kit basic I.O. shield. So when you get the box, you can open it up and inside should be the shield with a little bit of protective ESD foam. So this was designed originally to provide a broad range of input and output devices for beginners that were learning about microcontrollers. On board are digital inputs such as switches and buttons and an analog input in form of um, a potentiometer. Some outputs include there are eight organic LEDs, I mean onboard LEDs, as well as an organic OLED display. There's also uh, four open FET drivers for uh, higher current type projects such as motors or maybe you're driving LED strips. And then there's some more advanced devices such as an I2C EEPROM or an I2C temperature sensor. So the basic I.O. shield was designed to fit the same form factor as the UNO32 or the UC32 or the MAX32 board. So, to show an example, I'm actually going to use the UNO32. I'm going to connect them together. So first I'm going to ensure that my jumper settings are in the right places. Right, for the things that I want to use. And I'm going to connect the two boards. Right? Okay. So, the best way to start with your chip kit IO shield is to go to the product page. So, if you go to digitalintink.com and you can go to the chip kit boards. And within the chip kit board, you can see all the different versions that you can get, but the basic IO shield is under here. Click on that. And you're going to go to the product page and go to the support document section. I'm assuming already that you have downloaded MPIDE. If you haven't, then I'll include a link for you to get do that to get started with your UNO32 or UC32 or the MAX32. When you're on the product page, you're going to download uh, these two files. One's the reference manual, so we'll get started on that, which opens in a new window. So let's go back quickly to... And then the other one is going to be a zip file that contains all the documentation for your basic I.O. shield with MPIDE. So hit download on that. All right, so when you're in, in MPIDE, take a look and see if, um, take a look where your libraries are stored. So for me, it's under documents, MPIDE, and libraries. So once you finish downloading, you see I have this and it's a dash 2 because I've downloaded this before. Actually I didn't download it. Right. So once you have it downloaded what you're going to do is to select these three files and you're going to drag them into the libraries folder. If you have MPIDE open, you'll have to quit and start it again. To know that you have it in there, you can go to Import Library and go to the Contributed section. And there you should see that uh, you should have an IO Shield E prom. IO Shield OLED and IO Shield uh, temperature sensor. So you can select any of those and it should include it right away. 
What I want like to do is to go to the examples, and right here you should also see those same libraries, and uh, just pick one. So I'll pick the OLED demo shield. Next, I'm going to connect um, the Uno 32 to USB. And then connect it to my computer. Right. And you should see the Uno 32 flashing. Okay, so now that you have it connected, you can go to Tools and you select your board, which is the Uno 30G for me, and select the serial port it's connected to. Okay, hit up, Upload. And now, you should be able to see the demo on the microcontroller. There we go. So here's the demo chip kit OLED library running. And it's going to go through a couple sequences to kind of show the capabilities. So once you know that your IO Shield is working, you can explore a whole range of products, uh, a whole range of projects where you can do button presses and switches. Uh, the reference manual that you downloaded a little bit earlier on page six actually has all of the IOs mapped to either the Uno UC32 or the Max32. Really, the benefit that you get with this is that you don't spend all of your time wiring up all of the components individually and you can focus on exploring those programming concepts. If you do want to wire up those components individually, we have a different product which is the Chip Kit Starter Kit that's basically everything you need to create your own uh, projects. But the difference is, is very much in time. So to wrap up with the I.O. Shield, uh, it's really a great companion for anybody who's getting started with ChipKit, especially for somebody who really doesn't want to spend the additional time uh, wiring up each individual component. Um, so they can really focus on learning some of the programming concepts. Um, and I'll include in this blog post uh, some of the code that we use to do, especially the analog pot uh, controlled LEDs as well as um, a little preview of where we've used the IO Shield and other projects. If you have any other projects and you use the IO Shield yourself or you have some reviews for it, please leave them in the comments for us. But um, thank you for joining us.